Hi, and welcome to The Dapper Man. My name is Greg. This is Andrew, a buddy of mine from the lounge here. And today we're going to be doing a pipe smoking 101 video, so stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, today, like I said, we're going to be doing a pipe smoking 101 video. Uh, I bought this Savinelli just a few minutes ago from uh, Luke over at Rem's Lounge in Grand Junction, Colorado. Just taking the price tag off. This is their Christmas pipe uh, for 2020. As you struggle to get it back together. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was just, I just. I was trying not to break the uh, filter off in there because that's a pain in the ass to get out. Oh yeah. As you can see, nice little rustication. This is a 606 with the white acrylic stem. It is the extra large bowl. And you got, Andrew, it's another Savinelli. That one is the 626? Six, 602. All right, the 602. 602, yep. All right, and that is the Regent? Regent. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you look in the bowl here, it's already kind of pre-carbonized. I know you can't really see that. Uh, meaning, you really don't have to break the bowl in. Usually, if the bowl is just the you know the typical uh, unburnt briar, you want to be take your time to break in the bowl. But because it's already pre-carbonized, you really don't have to do that. Is it easy? Yeah, exactly. But I figure we'll do half a bowl. Uh, and today we're going to do your... I just grabbed the one off. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Get rid of the price tag here. <laughs> we're going to be doing the Peterson Early Morning Pipe. Now this is, this is actually your first uh, time smoking actual pipe tobacco, is that correct? Yep. Other things you got uh, since again your brand new pipe lighter or pipe smoker. These two uh, other lighters. This is just a pipe lighter. It's at an angle, so you don't have to uh, burn yourself when you light your pipe. And you also got a little pipe tool here. Now you went with this one over the check tool. Uh, why? Well, you said to me when I was looking at them that the hinge was a little frustrating having to open it up and fight with it. And this is just an easy both sides there. And the other tool had had a poker. Yeah. Which was only really used if I packed the bowl mm. too tightly or anything and yeah. it, you know for any of the a kind of smoking I'm yeah, yeah for a dollar more and any of the kind of smoking I'm doing the the poker mm -hmm. doesn't didn't really seem necessary or yeah. worth that price increase for me as and you is. also got a little bag I did um, that's all put away yeah so <laughs> as you can see I do have my pipe pouch here pipe purse this is a four pipe purse uh, recently, I bought this little condom holder for the um, pipe cleaners because I don't usually keep an entire bag of pipe cleaners in there. Other things that uh, that you may want to consider in the future are again a bigger. Um, now, once I get more than one <laughs> pipe, yeah. I'll have to size yeah. bags anyway. I usually Definitely. keep a couple mints in there, uh, some extra. Filters, these are just the Savinelli balsa wood six millimeter pipe filters. So, yeah, your pipe does six millimeter filters. Yeah, and I stocked up on those yeah. too. Some of the other, so this is the check tool that I have that I was just telling them about. The hinge is just, a, I don't want to, I mean, it's just a little loose, but to me, I don't need the, uh, the pick. I don't need the pick very often. So, that's why I normally do the same type of, oops, same type of nail. <laughs> that uh, Andrew chose. Back to try right here. I also have another check tool. <laughs> and I got this from Mrs. Dapper Man. This is just a more expensive check tool. Has your little scraper. It has, yeah. It has your pick. And of course, the tamper. So they, they come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, I usually just keep a couple big lighters in my pipe uh, bag here. And what matters more is getting something that works. It doesn't matter how fancy you go. Exactly. It's a simple tool. Exactly. In fact, we'll just toss that one back in there. 
I also have a very, very expensive pipe lighter. I uh, don't normally keep it in here. Uh, forgot the name of it, but it's one of the, uh, it's a really nice pipe lighter. It looks really Victorian era vintage, and it has the, um, the um, tamper tool on it as well. So what we're going to do is open this up and we'll go ahead and just let it air out, dry out for just a few minutes. Then we'll be right back to pack our pipe in the smoke. So stay tuned. Welcome back. We're now ready to uh, pack our pipes. We opened up the Peterson Early Morning Blend. Just in here. Yep. On the back, it says it is a mellow and delicately flavored smoking blend with oriental tobaccos. Light and Red Virginias. It is first pressed and then gently roasted with parts of Latakia. It's a medium cup and it is an English mixture. So I'll go ahead and go first just to kind of show you how it's done. This is a ready rub or you know your standard ribbon tobacco. Usually you take just a little bit just kind of drop it in. That's kind of a big Thing to try to drop in. Big hands. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> first, you just kind of sprinkle it in there, uh, then kind of like that. And just kind of. This is still a little wet, but it's not bad. Okay. And you'll find various ways to uh, to pack your pipe. Then. Just so it's even, I just kind of, kind of lightly tamp it down. And at this point, your bowl should be about half full. It's a three pinch blend, or three pinch method is what they call it. Um, you fill it up, so first sprinkle, then fill it up, and then tamp it down to about halfway. You fill it up again. Three pinches, tamp down again. Yeah, and you tamp down this way to about 75%. Okay. And so it's a little bit harder this time. The way everybody online explains it is think of it like shaking a hand. The first time is a baby's hand. Second time would be like a woman's hand. Third time would be like a man's hand. Yeah. And then just fill it up a little bit more. I usually don't go all the way to the top, uh, usually just below the top, and you'll want it dry. It's not too bad, maybe a little tight, but you, it should be like drinking a milkshake. should have to put some force into it. Right, but, so it shouldn't be like drinking milk. a soda, but yeah. And you don't want it like you're trying to suck cement through a straw. <laughs> At that point, you just uh, re ream it out. And you start over. So third one. Yeah. And then this is just a light flattened out. Yeah. And give it a test draw. A little light. So yeah. You can, yeah. That's better. Doing a little lighter pinches than you just because your yeah. bowl was bigger than mine. Yeah, but. this is the extra large bowl. And I know Mrs. Dapperman really wants me to switch full time to the pipes. Cigars. Uh, I know. Cigars are just so much easier. That's why I stick with cigars a lot. But she prefers the smell and the room note of pipes. It's a lot easier on her asthma. And it's a lot cheaper once you actually get beyond the initial pipe investment. Which. You kind of went all out on the accessories. I did. And, and, and you got a really good pipe, and it was still less than even, $250. Yeah, even after taxes, I was less than 250 bucks yeah. for everything and more than I probably needed. Yeah, that was four tins of Peterson tobacco. Uh, that was a Savinelli pipe. That was pipe cleaners, extra filters, a bag, a lighter. I mean, he pretty much got everything that he could need. And, of course, you don't need to spend all that immediately. Um, if you're brand new to pipes, you'll probably look at aromatics first. Something like a Captain Black. Uh, they have a cherry, they have a vanilla. 
those are nine dollars a pouch i think here in colorado versus nearly the 25 dollars a tin that we spent on the peterson and the only reason i went that route if anyone's curious why i went for the peterson tobacco is just because i'm a seasoned cigar smoker mm -hmm. and that's all i smoked i never never cigarettes or anything it's always been cigars and so I wasn't interested in kind of like those aromatics and I'm used to those heavier mm -hmm. tobacco-y flavors and so I kind of wanted to stay that, that yeah. route. So when Andrew was looking for a pipe, uh, there's some basic rules that you want to look at when you're trying to buy a pipe. The first is how it looks to you. You want to find something that, that you will look at, like to look at because this is, it can be a lifelong investment. Um, I used to, uh, right now my dad has it, but we have my grandfather's old pipe and he smoked it for decades and now I actually used it for a costume, a Sherlock Holmes costume, a while back. So a pipe can last a lifetime. Um, so it needs to be something that you're going to like to look at. You can look at the bowl size, smaller bowls are quicker smokes obviously. Bigger bowls like this one, this is the XL. I'm used to sitting down and smoking cigars for several hours straight. So for me, a, uh, a big bowl is something that I like. Also, the shape of the bowl. This is a billiard, this is what we call a bent billiard. We also have straight pipes, which would be called a straight billiard. Andrew here got a, um, <coughs> excuse me, also got a bent billiard. Both of Savinelli, both take the six millimeter filters. But it really it just needs to be something that looks good, that feels good in your hand, the bowl size should you know, be appropriate to what you're looking for. And then you want to look at the inside of the bowl. The inside of the bowl should not have any pock marks. And then the draft hole where the actual airflow get, goes should be pretty much dead center right at the bottom. That way, if it's not at the bottom, let's say it's a little bit higher, you're not gonna be able to smoke anything below that draft hole. So you filled your pipe. Yep, you're ready good. to go. Okay. I'm feeling that thicker, makes me think I'm drinking a shake. Good, good. Go ahead and we'll just, let me show you how to do it first. The first one is called the pre-light. Okay. And what's gonna happen is the tobacco will kind of expand, which is why I never fill it to the top. Yeah, that would not be fun. <laughs> And that's why you want a pipe lighter. They don't burn yourself. Yeah. You can also use matches, usually. It usually takes like three matches to light a pipe, uh, but don't be afraid to use more. Matches are cheap anyway. Yeah. Never a torch, right? Right. What's, what's you the... move the pipe, you move the uh, the light or the fire around. You can stop, and you want to draw in as well, so it kind of pulls the fire down. Like I said, this is a little bit too tight, so I didn't do a very good job packing it. But this is my first bowl with this pipe. Now you're going to do the second light. Okay. Well, I'm light enough you could explain yeah. why not the torch. I know you gave me a little rundown at one point, but I don't remember specifically. I'm less concerned about burning myself, but just a little curious. Because I have torches out the wazoo for the cigars. <laughs> All right, then you stamp down again. Again, very, very lightly. And then the third light. and you're set. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and move it around the bowl. Make sure it all gets lit. And then go ahead and tamp it down just very, very lightly. Now the reason you don't want to use a torch, and you always want to use a soft flame with the pipe, 
doesn't matter if it's a big lighter, a pipe lighter, matches, cedar splints, it doesn't matter. You always want to use a soft flame because torches burn at several thousand degrees and you will burn the crap out of your pipe and burn through the pipe. And that's what you don't want to do, especially when you spend, you know, a, some pipes like Dunhill go for $500, you know. Uh, some used Dunhill, some of the vintage Dunhills go for several thousand depending on the vintage. So you have it packed correctly. Oh, I had the advantage if I draw, mm -hmm. drew between every pack, so I was feeling it every yeah. time. Well, there you go. So now this is, like I said, an English blend. Uh, there are two main types of blends of tobacco, uh, pipe tobacco, aromatics and English, or non-aromatics, really. Uh, aromatics are things like your Captain Blacks, your Lane Limited, Anything that has like a rum flavor, banana flavor, whatever, that's called a casing. It's still all natural tobacco. They just add some sort of flavor to it and then, uh, and then package it. Non-aromatics are just the tobaccos, no casings. Um, that's the big difference. Now you also have different types of tobacco. You have like, a, like I said earlier when I was reading the tin, we have the Orientals, we have the little bit of Latakia, Light and Red Virginias, Orientals. All those have different types of, uh, of uh, smoking characteristics. Virginias are very, very common. Uh, Perique only come from Louisiana. Uh, it's a uh, fermented pressed uh, type of tobacco that only comes from Louisiana. Um, Latakia, they used to have Syrian Latakia. Now it's all Cyprian Latakia. Latakia, uh, Syrian Latakia was bombed out of existence, unfortunately during the Syrian Civil War. Um, you have, like I said, the Orientals, you have in, uh, Virginia's. Virginia's usually, especially Red Virginia, usually smells very vinegary uh, until it dries out. And then it's just a beautiful kind of sweet flavor. Uh, other things to know about smoking a pipe, it is okay for the pipe to go out. That is completely normal. You can set the pipe down. Sure, they've both gone out now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can set the pipe down, relight it without any issues. You can't really do that with a cigar. Um, you will, once you start smoking pipes, you will get something called pipe acquisition disorder. I have over two dozen pipes. Uh, every year, Mrs. Dapperman gets me one for Christmas. I have to look around getting myself one for New Year, or not for New Year's, for my birthday uh, in the spring. Uh, you also get tobacco acquisition disorder. Uh, Andrew here, never smoked a pipe before, bought four tins of tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> but you can get a dozen bowls or so, out, depending on the size of your pipe, out of a tin. So one cigar like a Liga Privada or ten pipes. Yeah. Some people say that you will need to uh, let your pipe rest after you smoke it. Uh, you just don't want to get it too hot. Uh, I know some people that would smoke the same pipe all day, every day, of the week. Some people like to have different pipes for their English blends and their non-English or aromatic blends. Um, other things to be careful of, never grab your pipe when you're trying to clean it. Never grab your pipe by the stem and hit it. You always want, because that's very delicate in there, you don't want to break anything. So when you're cleaning your pipe, and in fact, I'll show you. Yeah, you're not, uh, you break it, you're not yeah. fixing it, you're buying a new pipe. Yeah, so you don't flip it over, go like that, you never do that. Always grab it towards the bowl, like that. Uh, you never strike it on anything hard, like a um, ashtray. You don't want that. You can buy a little piece of cork, uh, and it looks like a cork stopper from a wine bottle. And you can just put that in the ashtray, and that way you're not hitting something hard. Never take your stem or your pipe apart, never take the stem out while it's still warm. That's okay. very important because the, uh, the moisture and the heat cause the wood to expand. You may not be able to get it back in there. Or if you try to force it, it'll break. Yeah, I don't want that. Cleaning your pipe. 
Very simple. In fact, I'm just going to lay this down for just a minute. You take, let's, this is another Savinelli I have. It may not be, you may not be able to see it, but there's some decent cake buildup in there. Yeah, it's, for me, it's a lot more visible yeah. than it will be for you on the video, but there's definitely, uh, you can tell stuff on the wood. And, yeah. And it looks, looks like the ash of what you were smoking yeah, before. Exactly. This is the filter. That's a for six, reference. Yeah. My but filter is as wide as that pipe cleaner. Yeah. And <laughs> so with the Savinelli, you just take it apart. You can run a pipe cleaner through. Doesn't matter which end it goes in. Okay. Yikes. This is dirty. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if the video picked it up, but you no. can tell. Yeah. You could tell. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's just from running through uh, just the stem once. Now I'll run it. I'll usually run the same one through the shank. Just take the other, the cleaner side, run it through the shank, and you can't really see it, but it's going all the way down into the bowl. And there you go. <laughs> Been a while since you cleaned that one, there. Yeah, you? and you actually you don't want to clean them too often. Uh, only clean it when it's cool. And. Yeah. easy for us <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh for the bowl what i normally do i'll just twist it in half throw it in there swirl it around a couple times now you do want to build up a cake that's the reason why pipes are pre-carbon most pipes are pre-carbon these days is you want to build up that carbon buildup on the inside of the pipe and the reason you do that is that it makes it a much cooler smoke. It protects the actual bowl of the pipe. And it doesn't, I mean, if, if you don't have a good carbon buildup and you smoke too fast, you can actually burn the side of the pipe. Like you can actually get a hole on the uh, outside of the pipe. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. Yeah. Cheap. No. <laughs> so you want a good buildup in there. Um, some people will take like molasses or honey, dip their finger in it, and kind of go around. I don't do that. Usually when you're breaking in a pipe, it usually takes about five bowls, two at a quarter, uh, so like a quarter, like two quarter bowls, two half bowls, and then a uh, uh, three quarter and then a full. Okay. Yeah. So that's just something you can do if your pipe is not pre-carbonized. Um, let me go ahead and actually get so a filter here. And I'll... We're not trying to get them perfectly clean. Just, no, just no. kind of they get like, the stem Think of like clean. cast iron, you know? Yeah. You want to yeah. you want to season it like a cast iron. Uh, Best pan. way to cook. Absolutely. Now That's your the cake should be ideally about the thickness of a dime. Um, so not a lot at all. No, it's no. Just a little layer. Yeah. And again, that's a clean filter. Compared to the, do yeah. you still have the dirty one? Yeah, it's in there somewhere. Yeah, uh, here. Yeah. How there dirty. You go. <laughs> yeah, it's significant. That's probably five smokes. Usually every three or so is what I really try to replace them. Then there are different filters that you can find. Uh, you can find balsa wood filters like these. You can find, I think Dr. Grable filters are paper. There are other filters. Savinelli actually has a clay filter now. Um, they even have little rocks that you can put in the bottom of your tray or a, a bowl to help uh, with uh, filtering. Uh, so it just depends on what you like. Not all pipes have filters. Some have nine millimeter filters. Uh, most, uh, let me take a step back. Not all pipes have filters. Most American pipes do not have filters. European pipes about 50-50. Uh, some will be six millimeters, some will be nine millimeter. Just find the type of filter or the size of filter, then you can go ahead and see if you want clay, paper, wood, or whatever. If your pipe does have a filter, but you don't want to use the filter, they come with a little uh, spacer in there to take the place of the filter. It's really just a piece of plastic, reduces the, uh, they just slide in there like a filter, but you don't have to clean it or anything. Any questions? I think that takes care of it because we got cleaning. Yep. We've got packing and lighting it. Yep. Um, and then as far as like general like 
maintenance or anything beyond cleaning? Is there anything that I need to? No. Um, actually, like I was telling you earlier, some people keep a pipe for their aromatics, another pipe for their non-aromatics. Um, the way, the reason they do that is because some some people say that they can get the the taste of the tobacco from one bowl to another. If you find that is the case, what you can do is take a cotton ball, soak it in some vodka or some other like non, you know, neutral, yeah. neutral kind of alcohol. Or, yeah, put it in there. Just let it sit overnight. Okay. Um, don't use rubbing alcohol, especially on your stems. Because that can cause discoloration depending on the type of stem it is. Okay. Uh, I think it's. Yeah, mine is all the wood, so I don't think yeah. I want to mess with that. No, no. Um, you can get. I don't actually have it with me. I should have brought it. You can actually get um, a wax to keep the shine on the pipe. Um, you know, just hand buff it with like a like a microfiber cloth to keep that nice and lustrous shine. Which is that, something every man should have because I do my own shoes. <laughs> yeah, that too, and I, I have one for my glasses. It's true. Yep. Right now it's over yep. on the other table. Uh, other than that, it's just try different, uh, try different uh, tobaccos. Um, if you want to look at pipes, uh, Peter, uh, what, pipesandtobacco.com has a great selection of pipes. If you want to look at estate pipes, eBay is fantastic for that. Yeah. Uh, I found some really, really good estate pipes. One of my favorite pipes when I travel for work is this tiny little Dr. Grabo pipe. That's about a 25 minute smoke at most. Nice, quick little. Yeah. And so, every, you know, the guys say, hey, let's go out for a smoke break. I can just fill this real quick. We can go out and have a smoke. Um, you'll see I have a little rubber bit on the end of mine. Andrew has one as well. I will actually get one for my new pipe. It's just to help uh, help your teeth when you're holding the pipe in your mouth. It's just easier to do that way. You don't really want to clench it with your teeth without a bit in there because you actually can bite through the stem. A great example is that is Albert Einstein's pipe in the Smithsonian. If you look at it, the end of the, uh, the stem here has been chewed to hell and then it looks like he took a canine and bit through the thing. So. He was stress chewing. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Other than that, pipe acquisition disorder is real. Uh, tobacco acquisition disorder is real. I have a couple, I probably have like 75 different tobaccos at home. Uh, yeah. I have at least two dozen pipes. I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure I'll uh, acquire more because my humidor at home is already so full that I yeah. probably need another one and now I'm going to be buying pipe today. Yeah, <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> for long-term storage, if you uh, keep it in the tin and the tin unopened where it has the vacuum seal, that'll pretty much keep forever. Once you break the seal, the vacuum seal on a tin like this, I highly recommend putting it in a mason jar. Uh, the seal doesn't isn't very good on these. Once it's in the mason jar, um, it can last years. I have some stuff that's lasted like five, six years. So I guess I do want to ask it on that. How do you manage humidity? Because you were telling me it needs to be at about 40%. Which yeah, for with smoking, our cigars, yeah. obviously we, we have to keep them in a humidor. Right. Um, if it's in the sealed jar, I, I can't imagine it's going to lose a lot of humidity. No, but if it, if it gets too dry, what do you do to moisten it up? Boveda pack, one of the small Boveda packs. Just uh, like with a, a bag or a small humidor. Just yeah, and like you them. can get, uh, they're actually designed for musical instruments. So they're about 40% relative humidity. Just throw it in there. Other people, if it's like, if it's already a cased tobacco or aromatic, they'll throw in an apple or an orange or whatever, depending on whatever flavor it is. Um, so nothing, nothing crazy, just no. normal, yeah. okay. It'll, it'll last forever in the tin if it's unopened. If it's in a jar unopened, it'll last pretty much forever. Um, Don't keep it with my cigars, because then right. it'll be way too humid. And if if your pipe tobacco does get too humid, put it on a paper towel or a plate or whatever, let it sit for half an hour or whatever. It It's going to feel too dry. It, so Andrew, feel this now. Feel how different that is. Yeah, like compared to even when I was packing yeah. it, it feels a lot less pliable. Yeah. More like I'm dealing with um, like it, wood shavings yeah. or something as it opposed to. It shouldn't feel like sawdust, but it shouldn't 
be like a cigar. Yeah, it no. shouldn't feel like wet grass. Yeah, it, it, like I said, it should be a more little like shaving, crunchy. so not yeah. dried out. But oh, what's what's the 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 best example I can really think of is it's kind of like if you've ever whittled or anything, you don't want the driest possible right. wood because then it breaks. It's, it feels kind of like that sort of wood when you're trying yeah. to shave bits of it off, wet enough that you can work with, but not wet enough yeah. that you couldn't really easily burn it. Now I am going to use the poker on my tool here. Because you got too tight. I did get a little too tight. Normally if you're too tight, you test it before you actually light it. There's no problem, you just un under your bowl and repack. If, it, if you've already lit, kind of poke around, loosen it up, and retamp. Yeah. All right, well, that's all for now. Andrew, any other questions? No, I think that takes care of it for me. All right. Well, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It should be down there somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I can never remember where it is. <laughs> Uh, hit the bell notification, you'll get notified when I do post a new video. If you want us to do a, another pipe video, please let us know. You just put in the comments what kind of video you want if you want us to review a particular tobacco. Actually, why don't we do that? What kind of tobacco flavors are you getting here? As far as... Yeah, I don't know why I was looking behind me for the lighter. Oh, thank you. Always be willing to share your lighter at a cigar lounge. Mm -hmm. This is one of the very, very light, uh, non-aromatic blends from Peterson. It is really light, like really light, which is interesting because it's almost all sort of that tobacco flavor without yeah. that kind of weight and the heaviness yeah. that you get in. A lot of smokiness, kind of like a dark fire cured Kentucky, but it's still very, very light. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to distinguish flavors. It's light enough. You can tell there's a flavor there, but it's light enough that to really pick out the intricacies of it is, is tough. Okay. Still a very good tobacco, especially for early morning. Uh, I could, I smoke this when I'm out from the morning walks in the spring and summer and fall. Right now it's a, it's about 9 degrees when I wake up in the morning, so I don't go on my morning walks. Yeah, it's a little, little cold. Yeah. Yeah. Considering we just started winter, I don't think we've been above freezing all week. We haven't, and I don't think we're supposed to get above freezing until... For another week. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's all and for now. In the warm part. Yeah, exactly. We just started winter in the warm part. Uh, that's all for now. Have a great day. Again, give us a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe and like. Share this video. If you want us to answer any questions or if you want us to do a particular uh, tobacco review, please let us know. Have a great day. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye.